Hey everyone, Mr. Browning M1911 here again. And in this video, it's a continuation of my medical kits. And this is my tier 5 medical kit. This is my backpack medical kit. This is the one that I uh, have with me all the time, especially when I'm out there in the wild. Um, this is a Molly 2 medical kit. That's what it actually says on the label. Um, and it's not a bad kit. Um, got a lot of cat hair on this thing. All right. Um, so here on the outside, I've got two pouches, and a care, you know, it's got the Molly webbing on the sides. Two straps here on the on the front to where. Uh, you know, you seal it easier. So, and normally I keep a tourniquet on the outside here, but apparently the tourniquet fell off and now I gotta go find it. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and open this part up here. And what I keep on here all the time is a Camillus uh, knife, basically. Um, I picked this up at Walmart. Uh, I got it for like $27. And this is not like the other Camillus knife. This is a, a, a stainless steel titanium blend. Um, there's another type of Camillus knife that you can get at Walmart. But that one only has um, a tang that goes about to right here. And it, and it breaks very easily. This one here, as you can see, the tang goes all the way through and comes right to the handle and everything. And I figured, hey, this will work great on my medical kit. You know, this has got good sheath, and then it's got another oops, little knife here with, you know, something like, like a little wrench type tool. Um, but, you know, it's a good little knife. Haven't really used this out in the real world yet, but like I said, I keep this on my kit at all times. And I keep it upside down like this on the side here so that when I'm wearing the pack, I can reach up underneath and I can actually pull the knife out if I have to. Okay, so that's that part there. I'm just going to put these straps back together here because I'm going to go through the outside pouches here first. Okay, I do believe, yeah. Okay, so in the first set of pouches here on the side, um, this I have set up, I believe this is either my boo-boo kit or it's my IFAC. Let's take a look here. Sometimes I forget. I do have um, paperwork um, written out for this. Okay, this one is set up for my IFAC. I have a tourniquet in here, and I got a roller gauze, got gloves, large, um, Purell, um, hand sanitizer, um, a standard cat tourniquet, still in its original packaging, hasn't been used. Um, here I have some quick clot sport. Got the old style field bandage. Oh yeah, everybody loves those. Got another roller gauze in here. Got a small abdominal bandage. This is, it can, well, it can be used both as a pressure bandage and an abdominal bandage. Um, got H&H &H wound seal kit um, for chest wounds. Um, a little bag here with two by two gauze. Got another chem light stick in here. Decompression needle. And what else do I got in here? Okay. And then I got non stick pads. These are 8 inch by 3 inch non stick pads. So I keep this one set up pretty much like almost like a, a an IFAC, you know. And I could take it off of this, uh, this big bag 
and utilize it as an IFAC if I needed to. You know, say like somebody, you know, doesn't have an IFAC or something of that nature. Well, here you go. Here's an IFAC. Although I have other IFACs too, so I have quite a bit. Oh, let's get this in there first. The tourniquet first. Little gauze second. All right. I'm gonna try not to just constantly keep putting things back in the pouches, but it looks like I might have to do it that way. Um, I don't know how long this video is gonna go. Okay. Come on, close up, there we go. All right, now interestingly enough, when I got this Molly 2 kit, it came with these pouches, okay? The pouches were inside and it came with 10 of these pouches. And I'm like, well, okay, what am I gonna do with 10 pouches? Well, these are all medical kit pouches actually. And uh, so use them for medical kits, put them in something else and whatnot. Here I've got two extra chem lights that are sitting on the outside. And then I got two chem lights over here on this other side. This bottom kit here is my boo-boo kit, okay? It's, it's got, you know, just regular band-aids, triple antibiotic ointments, um, all the standard boo-boo stuff. Over here on this side here, this is predominantly my airway system. This is my airway kits, okay? what I'm going to use to uh, properly keep an open airway if need be and also uh, for CPR. Here I have two oral pharyngeals. Um, okay, lubrication, lubricating jelly for um, the nasal pharyngeals, which I got here and whatnot. And then here I have a MicroShield CPR mask, disposable. And in this one here, I have a pocket BVM. It pops right open. Okay, this one has not been used. So, still good. You know, some people say those are only one use, but actually no, you can use them multiple times. All you have to do is clean them. Okay, and that's all that's in that one. And then the bottom pouch here, I have, let's see, what do we have in here? Okay, we have another, or some more nasal pharyngeals, some more oral pharyngeals, another micro shield, and then I have, um, this one here is the reusable pocket mask. These have not been used ever, um, but you know, it's just another type pocket mask to protect yourself from when you're doing CPR. And then this one is the oxygen version where you have the straps here and then you can hook up either the BVM or an oxygen tank if you have to. What else is down in here? What else do I got in here? Oh, okay, I got a little little pen light that I keep in here. Okay. All right. So, but I keep my airway kit on the outside so I can get to it as fast as possible. And I'm not having to, you know, unstrap everything, unzip everything, and then, oh, and then try to figure out where everything is in reality. So I know my airway kits are on the outside. And then of course I have, you know, an IFAC style kit on the outside so I can go to that real quick if need be. Again, two more light sticks here. Yep. 
EVMS slips nice and neat in there. Get the micro shield in there. Lubricating jelly, nasal pharyngeal, and the oral airways. It all goes in there, trust me. Okay. Now, for the guts of this thing. All right. We just open the flap here. Okay. And it pops open right here. And here, what we have in the top flap is kind of like a map compartment. Well, it, other supplies can go in there and stuff like that. So I have put some gauze pads in there and things of that nature. So here we have, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine non-adhesive foam dressing. Four inch by 4.25 inches. Okay. Now in here I got this folder, which I keep. Oh, there they go. Falling on the floor. I keep this folder in here. Oops. And inside this folder, I have certain paperwork. Health history questionnaire. Um, these are my tactical combat casualty care cards. Um, I need to cut them down a bit, but, you know, got a whole bunch of them. Medication flow sheet, if there was any medication administered and whatnot. But that's pretty much what's in there, you know. Yeah, out in the wilderness, you know, you, you might not have EMS coming as quickly as possible. So you might be out there for a while and things of that nature. And so <clears throat> it'd probably be a good idea to just start writing things down, you know, so that when EMS does arrive, you have a good log of the injured individual. Okay. Now, this part here. We have two flaps here. Okay, so I'm gonna let that one hang there. These flaps, you can just disconnect and you can get inside the pockets here. First pocket here, I have feminine, fe, uh, feminine hygiene <laughs> packs. I have um, North American Rescue Emergency Trauma Dressing. And then I have a large uh, abdominal dressing. Okay, that's pretty much all I got in that pouch there. And then in the next pouch down, I just have a couple emergency blankets to keep, you know, anybody warm, keep them from going into shock, things of that nature. All right, we'll just set that over there for now. Ah. All right, the next one, I've got a little bit more gear in here. All right, so here we have some decompression needles. Um, EMT shears. Good headlamp. those moments of darkness stethoscope it's just a cheapo stethoscope it's nothing big good knife everybody needs a good knife um, even in medical kits I believe okay this here is a anal thermometer here we have an ear thermometer and of course we have the the covers for the ear thermometer. 
And then we have two regular thermometers, oral. Here I have another knife. This is just a NRA knife, I guess. Don't know where I got it from, but hey, you know the usuals. Oops, let's go ahead and put that back in its pouch. Put it back where it belongs. Okay, then I have a little magnifying glass with a light. Sometimes the light works, sometimes it doesn't. Got some more uh, covers for the ear thermometer. get these out of here. They don't seem to want to come out. I have little bags of safety pins of multiple sizes. What is this here? Rely on... Oh, thermometer probe covers. Okay, those are the thermometer probe covers for the oral thermometers. And then I have a little kit here with toenail clippers, fingernail clippers, tweezers, Always a good thing to have in case somebody ends up getting an uh, ingrown toenail, ingrown fingernail, you know. So, because those things, I don't know if anybody's ever had that, but those things are a pain in the butt to deal with out there. Okay. Stethoscope knife. This knife here is really nice. Oh, this is a Gerber knife. Yeah. So. I've had it for quite a while. Can't remember where I got it. But it's a good knife. Alright. Everything back in that pouch there. And now the next pouch. Okay. Here I've got batteries. Triple A's and double A's, just extra batteries. This is my pulse oximeter. Oops, the back came off. How oh, nice. Hmm. Oh well, but this is my pulse oximeter. Here I have um, a wrist blood pressure cuff. This goes right here on the wrist. And then I have a regular, this should be my regular blood pressure. Yep, this is my regular blood pressure cuff. Oh. This was really cheap. Um, I got it at an actual medical store. Uh, sold it to me really cheap. Got some duct tape and I've got a whole bunch more batteries of AA and AAA to go with my pulse oximeter and my other blood pressure cuff here, the electric one. Can't have enough batteries, I guess. But I do take the batteries out of these because um, if you don't take the batteries out, they will go off and then you have no batteries. Okay, now for the guts of this kit. Okay, so in the middle here, I have four, five, five muslin bandages or triangular bandages, military style. Here's an older style uh, field dressing. Okay, and I have an Israeli bandage here. This is the six inch Israeli bandage, and I have a four inch. Israeli style bandage. This thing here, this is my blizzard survival blanket. This is definitely great for, you know, wrapping somebody up to prevent shock. Um, here I have a jar of Manuka Docker, Doctor Honey. Okay, this is a fresh bottle. I got this at uh, Sprouts. Expensive, but it comes in handy. Here I have two packages of wet ones. And then here I have this. This is a Wilderness Medical Associates, the field guide of wilderness and rescue medicine. So, you know, it, it has just all different kinds of 
uh, material in it. I believe it is waterproof. Here we've got some, uh, uh, you know, soap note cards, as they call them, for uh, injuries and whatnot. And it just goes over all the different types of injuries, you know, um, transporting somebody out in the wilderness if they're injured. Great uh, reference book to have. Okay, here I have a brand new uh, surgical or emergency surgery kit. I'm at, you know, but and then I here I have sutures of different types. I have different types of sutures. Now, of course, using the sutures and everything would be very last ditch out there in the uh, the wilderness. I mean, if I have access to EMS and whatnot, let them handle everything and whatnot. But if it's a situation where, you know, possibly nobody's coming or whatnot, then go ahead. Um, here I got a Sam splint. Here I've got a write in the rain notebook. Uh, these are uh, 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 skin closures. <laughs> Trying to think. Here I have another uh, surgical or emergency su surgical kit. Um, some more wound closure strips. Another Sam splint. Okay, now in the pockets, I have four pockets here. I have one pocket here, two here, and one here. So here I keep pretty much all of my, uh, well, most of my over-the-counter meds. I keep some in some of the others here. Here I've got military issue Purell hand sanitizer. Um, here I have some, can't read that, but <laughs> Here I've got aspirin, um, pain reliever, PM, which is predominantly acetaminophen, and headache relief acetaminophen. Okay, what else do I got in this pocket here? Oh yes, I got anti-diarrheal and emodium, AD and uh, uh, Tool softener. Let's go over here to this pouch here. Here I've got a bunch of eye patches and the, the strips for the eye patches. Some 2x2 two two gauze and some more 2x2 two two gauze. Okay, over here on this side here. Okay, got some writing utensils, got pins for the uh, notebook and for the other documents, uh, highlighter, and then here I've got glucose tabs, just a bunch of glucose tabs. I uh, bought these over at Walmart, they were a dollar a piece. Oh, I'm running out of room here. Okay, and that's all that's in that pouch. And then of course the last pouch I have 4x4 gauze pads here. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. Then I have these three pockets here at the bottom. Okay. The first one here, I have saline lock kits and some IV kits and other needed supplies for IVs and whatnot. Drip lines. Um, Having to kind of set things off to the side here. All right, and then the first or the next pouch here I have here. Uh, this one is lactated ringers injection, and then this one should be uh, sodium chloride, 0.9 percent. Yep, yeah, thousand milliliter. All right, and this is pretty much my level or tier five, I should say, tier five kit. And 
this is what I carry when I'm out there. So all the other kits, well, I will probably have an IFAC on me too for my own personal. Um, but uh, the other kits, like I said, like the Tier 4 kits, I use them to replenish this kit. I have another Molly 2 bag, and it is full, but it's not set up like this kit here. Again, that Molly 2 kit carries extra stuff. Most of all, my liquid uh, stuff like extra hydrogen peroxide, some alcohol, other uh, rehydration uh, liquids and things of that nature, and other bottles of pills to replace what I use up in this kit. All right, this is my Tier 5 kit. Hope you liked it. If you liked the video, hit like. If there's anything you think I could put in here or take out or whatnot, leave uh, some good comments down at the bottom. If you have to leave some bad ones, okay, I can deal with that too. Um, and if you like our channel, uh, please subscribe. And this is Mr. Browning M1911, out.